Hello everyone, my name is Michael SK and welcome back to Autry My Dear Moments. And speaking of Autry, that appears to be the person from the past, from Natsuki's past, the one that he calls his first love, which, you know, when you're an eight or nine year old, you know, you don't you don't really know what love is, but you can definitely have a huge, you know, interest and appreciation in a person. And that's exactly what he had in this character that he could very, very barely remember. But with the description that he gives, every time it, it just pieces back to Autry. So I believe we're going with the idea that it is Autry, or I'm throwing in the wacky prediction that maybe there was a real person that, you know, looks exactly like the Autry we know here today that maybe died or something, and a humanoid was created to match that image. But I might be, you know, thinking a little too crazy here. Either way, the next day. You gotta think outside the box a little bit. It's the weekend, so there's no school. Instead, back to the salvaging business? I believe so. All right, we're under the sea. Don't start singing it. No, this one's a bust. I can't see anything that looks like the one we're searching for. We've had a great rush of salvage jobs recently. Rumors have been spreading about our business since our first successful job, and the customers have been coming in thick and fast since then. Today we're using our free time to go searching for some of the more difficult requests, but we've hit a pretty big snag. We've had a, or we have a client who wants us to retrieve an heirloom that was lost in a shipwreck in a storm several years ago, but we can't even find the ship. That ship's been down here a long time. It could have drifted away on the current. Autry, swimming alongside the sub, holding onto its chassis, suddenly taps on the window and gives me some kind of gesture. <laughs> Want more crabs? Do you see something? She points and I turn the rudder. There's something lying on the bottom of the ocean. Is it a ship? That's not natural, but it's no ship either. Autry swims over and lifts the object up. It's a long, thin object. For a second, I'm about to write it off as a lost mooring rope, but I pause. Hang on. Is that an undersea cable? It's attached to some kind of small relay on the sea floor. Autry pulls on it, but it's impossible to see just how far it stretches, or far away it stretches. Be careful with that. It might still be functioning. I wonder if it's the kind of optical fiber cable that used to connect to islands or used to connect islands to mainland communication networks. Going by the map, there's not any other land masses out in the direction for a long while. I wonder where it leads. Let's just say, wait. Wait, what what I wonder it leads. God damn it. We're already, we're already getting into the mistakes. In the past, cables like this used to crisscross the entirety of the Pacific Ocean, connecting Japan to ocean or to countries far across the sea. Nothing pertinent to the job in hand, unfortunately. Roger. Autry, prepare to surface. She grabs hold of the serpent Zalbus, and I fire up the compressed air tanks to send us upwards. Up, up, up we go. Rurika hands me my cane, and I finally feel able to breathe. An undersea cable. It looked like the kind that you would use to link an island to the mainland, but there's no islands in that direction. Maybe there's some kind of outpost stationed out in the ocean. Salvaging from sunken houses is made significantly easier by being able to be, by being able using maps. Unfortunately, heading further out to hunt shipwrecks probably requires specialized techniques. I don't feel particularly good about taking money for a failure, though. The people that come to us often want us to salvage more than just an object. They're looking for their memories. The vast majority of the requests that we get 
are to find things that have far more sentimental value than they do monetary. Today's failed salvage was just the same. I think we should camp out here for the night and search again in the morning. If we try to make our way back ashore from this far out in the dark, we may well end up joining our client's ship on the seabed. Atri, go and shower off while we get things ready. Hi. She trots off, leaving little wet footprints on the way to the bathroom. Ah. A night at sea. After a slightly early dinner, we all engage ourselves in our business. Our own, our own business. There we go. Ryuji listens to his favorite radio program. The radio waves are barely reaching this far out. And the sound of fuzzy guitars has to fight to be heard over the static. Rurika is pouring through the modest collection of books. Or my modest collection of books. Happily devouring all manner of things that she can't find on the library shelves. I'm simply lying around bored. Where has Atri got to? Huh, I see. It's rare for her to leave my side without good reason. What do you expect? While Ryuji tries every trick in the book to will the radio waves into the antenna, turning it to every angle and jamming it up against his ear, I pass by him and walk out onto the deck. Don't get me wrong, guys. Music is very important. But sometimes you just have to face the fact that you just don't have the connection for it. Atri is sitting on the edge of the bow, dangling her feet over the water. She's gazing off listlessly into the far distance, looking at her face thrown into profile against the evening calm by the lights of the ship. A sudden pang of something akin to homesickness washes over me. I intended to call out to her, but I, f I just find myself simply watching her in silence. No. Are you all right? You're just staring into space. She turns her eyes back to the still ocean. Yeah, that is weird. The sea is our mother. The cloud is our brother. And the waves are our comrades all. They say humans all have a connection to the sea. And maybe even you do too. She turns away from me with an odd look, almost guilty. A heavy silence falls over us. I have no idea what to say. The sea is so still that even the waves offer us no comfort. I want to hear that song again. Would you sing for me? She pauses and nods and then takes a soft, quiet breath. She starts to sing. Oh, this is... You know, I, I gotta keep talking. I gotta make sure that... Yeah, you know, I drowned this out. She starts to sing at first in a quiet, faltering tone. I was going to mention that in the previous episode, she was humming along with the uh, song that Natsuki was playing on the piano in class, which is uh, an interesting combination. You know, how do they both know this? She hums softly as if searching long buried memories for that old melody. It's like she's piecing the notes together from deep in her memory banks. Gradually, the fragments come together. And? Come on, you gotta you got give me something here. Unless we're just supposed to be listening to the music. Which, unfortunately, I can't do. She sings clear and lilting. Well, I can, but like, I can't have that beat the focus here, guys. I'm sorry. It seems like it's all coming back to her. Her voice resounds across the soft orange glow of the ocean. The lone witness to this beautiful spectacle, I stand bewitched. I think back to the days when I learned this song. I never had the slightest doubt about my future back then. I was sure life would be filled with happiness. I thought the joy I felt would last forever. I believe that without any proof, without even a single shred of evidence. And then I lost my mother, and my leg, and your tuition. I can never go back to those innocent days. 
Yeah, unfortunately, there always is going to be that turning point in a lot of ways in our lives. And yet it feels like, okay, we, are, we already have another mistake. And yet it feels like they're right here again in the form of this song. My cheeks feel warm. I suddenly realize that it's because of the tears running down them. I don't wipe them away. I'm too enthralled to care. This is a nice uh, you know, thumbnail quality CG here, though. I don't know. There, there's just something about Autry's design, which is so simple, but now that we know a bit about her character and you know what she is to a degree, it just adds more, I would, I would argue. Before I know it, the seas are all silent again. There is nothing but the soft whistle of the wind around us. Audrey lets out a sigh, quiet and yet filled with emotion. She puts her hand to her chest as she speaks. And now she's fully remembered it. Oh no, it was you. You... The words simply won't come out. I don't know if I know how to express what I want to say. You did? She speaks slowly. Every word so careful and delicate. Yeah, that would connect with what we uh, saw in our little flashback. Autry, so it was you. She reaches out a hand to gently, so gently wipe away my tears. Oh, come on. Man, you can't hit us with that fucking smile. That's painful. Oh, no, that's thumbnail quality here. Oh, fuck, dude. Oh, no. She smiles at me, the sweetest of smiles, and I feel myself fall in love for the second time. Damn. Have you guys ever fallen in love with your toaster? I haven't, personally. But in the middle of the night, I'm awoken by a horrendously hot, heavy sense of humidity. Yeah, when you got a whole bunch of people in here. Ryuji and Rurika are both squashed into this cramped bed with me. I had laid out a sheet on the floor, but I struggled to get to sleep down there. What time is it? It's completely black outside of the window, but it's not too far from, from the dawn. Atri is sitting in a chair, comfortably snoozing away. It's been a long time, hasn't it? You've really grown up. I felt so bashful around Atri after that moment that I locked myself up in the cabin and said nothing to her for the rest of the night. I sort of already realized this, but I'm not really... I'm, or I'm really not as experienced with regular human relationships as I should be. Until I dropped out of the academy and came here, Minamo was the only friend that I have ever made. And obviously... I've never had a girlfriend. I thought such things were below me. I guess this is the kind of situation you end up in if you don't build up a knowledge base. I had always acted as if I was above everyone else, but looking back at the past few weeks, that could hardly be less true. I'm just a man who's good at studying, I suppose. I look back on the me that thought he could save the world all by himself with acute embarrassment. I sit on the bed with my head in my hands. Ah, it's... Too hot in here. This cabin and furthermore this bed is not suited to this kind of population density. I carefully extricate myself from the tangle of bodies and quietly make my way outside. Oh yeah, we're getting that night breeze and I guess also the fucking fog. Why is it so foggy? The entire ocean is coated in a thick layer of cloudy mist. It should be about time for the sun to begin to peak above the, uh, above the horizon, but there's not a single trace of its rays. The wind is still, and yet the waves are buffeting the ship. The deck is swaying enough to almost toss me off my feet. I have to grab onto the railing to keep myself from being swept into the briny deep. I should head back to bed. As I go to turn around, the fog grows somehow even darker? What? I peer into the gloom. What the fuck? The hell is that? That looks so low quality. An enormous silhouette looms over me through the mist. Whoa. It towers over the ship, gleaming with red lights. It's a lighthouse. 
I think. Is that the lighthouse? No, it wouldn't be in that direction. That's further out at sea, nowhere near the town. Did the... God damn, what is with all these mistakes? Did we come unanchored and drift somewhere in the night? The fog is so thick that I can't make out anything else around us. If it's not a lighthouse, then what is it? Some kind of huge fairy or... A monster? Perhaps I'm dreaming. This is just a strange nightmare brought about by the muggy heat of the night. I shake with fear, rooted to the spot by the swaying of the deck. And then I hear the pitter-patter of footsteps behind me. Autry? Yep. And nobody was calling you. Autry shuffles out of the cabin, rubbing her sleepy eyes. Autry... I didn't call you. Wake up, damn you. Autry stares blearily out at the shadow in the fog. Yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? I have no idea. It's almost like the red light is staring back at her. Whoa. The ship shudders beneath my feet. I struggle to not go flying across the deck. The waves, they're coming from that thing. The shadow approaches closer, buffeting the ship with an even more powerful swell. It's going to crash into us at this rate. We need to move. I fire up the engine and weigh acre. The waves emanating from this monstrous object wash over the deck. What is going on? This is so weird. Even as I panic, Autry remains standing still, staring at the light. The ship's propellers spin into life. Fighting through the waves, I maneuver out of the path of the shadow. It's not chasing us. The red light in the mist starts to grow dim. It seems like it's retreating. The light in the shadow gradually fade into the fog. The waves soon calm and the ship is steady. Well, that was anticlimactic. That thing. It was calling to you? I don't think you were just imagining it. There has to be more to this. Autry sleepily takes me by the hand and leads me back inside. Back into the heat. That was really fucking weird. That was, that was strange. Yeah, it was almost like some kind of monster. A few hours later, the fog has completely disappeared. Yeah, what do you think it could be? You guys ever read Life of Pi? An island? It seemed to be moving, though. A floating island. As a man of science, I'm not given to believing in urban legends like this, but this time... I've seen it with my own eyes. The reason why I asked about Life of Pi is because I believe there was a, uh... The, the book was written so that it would actually be 100 chapters long. Somewhere like just two words long, just to try and hit that mark. It was ridiculous. But there was one long chapter about how uh, he and the, and the... Was it a tiger? Yeah, it was a tiger. Uh, they came across an island that was so surreal... Like, it was, it was ridiculous. It was hard to describe. I would probably have to reread it, actually, to try and fathom what the fuck all that was. Unless the movie covered it. Either way, I like mysterious shit like that. Because you never really know what's out there in the ocean. When it comes to the uncharted waters, you just don't know. Was she just half asleep earlier? Yeah. It must have been a dream or something. I put it out of my mind and decide to concentrate on work. We're going back underwater to try and find this fucking ship? Or we're just moving to the next thing, but hey, look at that. Look at that. We're coming up on something, and there seems to be a connection with this something to Atri. Which is really fascinating, because it's not anything that I would have expected. Not at all. What a nice morning. Look, uh, looking at the sun streaming through the window across the ceiling of the ship, I unintentionally sigh. I sit up and look across the room. 
Autry is sleeping on the sofa. I wouldn't let her sleep with me again last night. I peer at her sleeping face, feeling more than a little guilty. Autry? Oh, she's out. Autry? Still out. I shake her lightly, but she shows absolutely no sign of waking up. Recently, she's been even worse at getting up in the morning. That part of her is cute too, though. Who am I talking to, exactly? Guys, we have to protect that smile. This smile is also going to hurt me. Uh, my face is burning. My chest feels tight. I almost want to scream in frustration. Ah, uh, it just had to be Autry. That blissful expression of hers is so annoying that I can't help but pinch her cheeks. Robots can talk in their sleep? Even with my fingers playing with, their, with her squishy cheeks, she doesn't stir at all. I give up and go about my usual morning business. For some reason, I take particular care with my hair and skin today. Oh yeah, we, we gotta take care of our hygiene. We have to look presentable too. We leave our ship and head to school. Autry hops over to the pier before me and helps me across. It's just part of our usual morning ritual. Thanks. Autry walks hand in hand with me all the way to the all the way to school, happily kicking her feet up high with every step. Ah, to be carefree. Our path takes us to a hill on the coast. The sea breeze tingles pleasantly against my skin. Autry's in a good mood, as she always is on the way to school. She's always so excited to get there and study. She's so adorable like this that I can't help but smile. I wonder if Catherine looks at all of the little kids in the same way. Hey, Autry. I come to a stop and pull Autry's arm. Okay. All right. I love you. Autry tilts her head quizzically. You know, I am in love with you. Atri pulls on my hand until I lean over and then stands on her tiptoes as she strokes my hair. It's ever so slightly humiliating, and yet I can't bring myself to stop her. It just feels too good. Atri beams as she pats my head. Really? Oh, well, I'm glad. Atri kicks her feet up even higher as we walk together. Well, her saying that she loves us... Probably, okay, thank you, Ryuji. Her saying that back to us probably isn't, like, the same that it would be like from, like, a regular person saying it back to us, you know? I don't think she really understood what I was saying. Yeah, I said it out right. But I don't think she understands the concept. Romantic love might not be something that she's equipped for. I worked a lot of courage to confess, and this is how it ends up. It's painfully disappointing. Yeah, yeah, we just gotta work at it. I hope so. Our salvage operation out at sea ended up actually going really well. On the second day, we ran across the ship that we were looking for almost completely by accident. The client was so surprised and elated that he gave us even more money than we'd agreed. Yeah, that would be nice. The two of us start to walk back to the classroom, chatting as we go. What the fuck? Why were you eavesdropping, Catherine? She's probably not going to be a fan of this. The morning's classes pass without much incident. Among them is Catherine's first music lesson. We've moved the piano into an empty classroom and turned it into the music room. The lesson is supposed to be for the smaller children, but everyone ends up wanting to take part. Before long, lunchtime comes. Boya. Do you have to call me that? 
as well as the little kids. So, did you need something? Yeah, I, I, I guess you're welcome. After we had returned from the salvage job on the weekend, I came to the school to teach Catherine to play better. Better? Better. Although I'm hardly skilled enough myself to teach anyone, Catherine already had a good grounding from her teaching course, so I only needed to give her a refresher. You did pretty well just now. The children seemed happy. What can I say? You can be as much trouble as Audrey and Rurika sometimes, though in a slightly different way. I get the urge to help her out sometimes. It doesn't really matter that she's older or my teacher. She smiles ominously. Where the hell is this going? After lunch, Catherine comes into the classroom with that same smile. Oh, this can't be good. I knew it. I don't know why, but I just knew that it was coming up. In my head, I was thinking, okay, so she eavesdropped, and she wants to make sure that we're on the right path to not hooking up with a humanoid. Okay, so we can't be with our toaster. How, did, how do you necessarily teach that, you know? How do you take that and try to form it into education? Her words reverberate through the classroom. Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily appropriate. I think the kids are, you know, a little, a little too small. All of the boys from every school year are assembled on the roof. Now, don't get me wrong, by the way. I think, I think sex, uh, sex education is, is very important because it's not just like, you know, sex, I, I, I suppose. I'm trying to figure out a better way to say it. But no, it's it's literally your it's it's your body parts. Just just straight up. It's what you're gonna go through with puberty. It's it's what's going to go down in the upcoming future and what you need to be aware of in terms of being safe as well. So there is all of that, and I think that's really important stuff. Sex ed as a whole is very, very important. But these are elementary children. I don't necessarily know when you're supposed to like sit them down and and you know students that is sit them down for this that's beyond me there's eight of us up here we've all been sitting nervously in a circle since she ordered us out of the classroom <laughs> you do want to separate the uh, the two sexes though we initially thought that we'd move into the classroom next door but ryuji suggested that this would be better <laughs> I'm lost in thought. Catherine planned this lesson with some objective in mind, but I had it uh, but I had it sprung on me as a complete surprise. I suppose I should try to teach them something. The girls are definitely going to learn something important in there. If we don't do the same, they'll be making fun of us for days. Yeah, it's not really all that exciting. A palpable tension builds in the air. So the reason why it's a, it's very, very important to separate the sexes is because kids are extremely immature, as you would expect. And goddamn, do they not take anything seriously. You need to separate because there's two different focuses, you know? There, there's a lot of things that, you know, the females need to go over because their their whole, you know, situation is quite a bit different than the males. So, and then there's also just... Nothing's going to get accomplished, and there's going to be a lot of annoyances if you just have the class together, in my opinion. I'm no teacher. I'm just an idiot. So, what do I know? Either way, um, I, I think it would be important to... Uh, it's, it's not just sex, you know? Come on. I'd like to introduce our guest lecturer today, Professor Nojima. Eh? 
Out of all of us, you seem like you'd be the most knowledgeable about that kind of thing. Yep. Ma. Everyone's gaze is fixed expectantly on Ryuji. Ryuji-senpai suck this! Okay, so that was a middle school student. I guess that's... I guess a middle school... I think middle school is whenever I learned sex ed. The crowd oohs eagerly. And thus begins our tutelage under Professor Nojima. Which can only go well. あ、ほっておきなさい。こういう時浮き足立つのが男子の宿命なのよ。you know what? Never mind about everything I just fucking talked about. It seems like the discussion is really on sex. Not necessarily like sex ed, which again is supposed to be on like other things as well. I don't like this all of a sudden. To an extreme degree. しかも小学生。あんたたち貴重な青春を無駄にしてるわね。いや。うっさいな。自分だっていない<笑> あたり、異性から好きって言われたら、彼氏を持ってることになるのでしょうか。まず彼氏は持ち物じゃないから、関係性を指す言葉よ。学習しました。アトリッチ、もしかしてこくられたの?あ、shit。はい。今朝、夏
どう違うんだミオ教えてあげてえっと友達とか家族の好きはライクで恋してる人への好きがラブ<笑>初頭部の子に言われるとダメージでかい照れちゃうねうん理解不能どう違うんでしょうか I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, pr it's pretty, pretty on paper here, you know? Honestly, like, because of the human to humanoid deal, I would say that the love that they probably feel for one another is more on like a familial level. それか一緒にいる時もだけど切なくなっちゃったりとかそういうことってあるあ、oh, yeah, うん、ある気がします。なつきさんがアホのリュウジと親しくしていると非常にムカつきます。いや、not really what I meant, but that is true. あたしも前に彼氏いた時あたしより男友達といる時の方が楽しそうです。ゲームがついたもんやきもちって感情ね自分以外の誰かと親しげだったり自分より大切にされてる人を見て妬む気持ちやきもち解析します出ましたさっき不成立と言っていましたがつまり私と夏希さんの好きがすれ違っていたため恋人関係が成立していないということでしょうか So Natsuki definitely meant it in a romantic sense, I'm sure. Whether he, you know, believes it's romantic or not, I, I think that was, I mean, it was a confession. He was talking to Ryuji about it on the roof. But to Atri, who is unable to fathom that and probably won't ever really be able to, that's why I'm like, it's probably going to be more of a familial love between them. What? That was kind of fucked up. Come on, answer her question about the hamburgers. Yes, it is. This is also not sex ed anymore. This is just straight up like. This is totally different. After being taught all about romance by an, by an elementary school boy, we move on to a blow by blow, sometimes literally, account of what it's like to have an older sister. We've heard all about her making him run errands or lazying around the house half naked or dressing him up in girls' clothes. This has gone from sex ed to something that's going to put everyone off of girls for life. Also, that was supposed to say this has, not this is. Thankfully, we're saved by the tiny bell. I breathe a sigh of relief as I'm finally freed from this personal hell. Yeah, let's never do this again. Catherine shouts out or shouts up from the classroom window. I've never been so glad to hear that voice. All of the boys look surprisingly serious. It seems like they took something from the class. Yeah, right. I have absolutely no idea what I should be doing, but I'm happy that he's cheering me on at least. Good to have that support. Always. As soon as I enter the classroom, Atri rushes over and grabs my hand. Uh, nice to be back. It's, uh, nothing. I squeeze her hand ever so slightly. 
そっちはどんな授業したんだえっと花子先生が男子には絶対言っちゃダメってうんだよいいだろちょっとぐらい All I'm gonna say is I think in my 8th grade variation of sex ed We learned about super condom リュウジ君のスケベなそんな過激な授業をやったのかある意味そうかもやるな花ちゃんてかイリカにもそんな話を聞かせたのか私大人の階段登っちゃったんだ y e a boy なハンバーグはラブじゃなくてライクなんだよん何の話だ男子は何してたのそりゃすげえ過激な授業だよ。女子には聞かせらんねえような。なあ、夏。Yeah, it was so hardcore, I had no idea what was going on half of the time. I'm not lying. やるじゃん、男子。<笑>ちょっと照れちゃうね。And so our sex education ended with a distinctly strange atmosphere between the boys and the girls of the school. Yeah, that was awful. That, that, that shit sucked. I, I think I get it. Maybe. Actually, I don't really know where that was supposed to go because I thought Catherine was going to be like, all right, this is why you should not, you know, go fuck a toaster. But no, instead, it's just like we jump to the idea that Autry cannot properly process the idea of romantic love. I guess that was the point. It's not long before the day as a whole comes to a close. Which is kind of silly because we kind of roped the entire fucking class into that shit. I'm on cleaning duty, so I stay behind,、uh, so、I stay behind sweeping in the halls. Excuse me. From the outside, this place may look like a wreck, but the inside is keeping surprisingly spotless. Understood. You seem to be trying really hard in the cooking club. Yes. We haven't exactly got much choice of clubs at such a small school. Over half of the girls here have become Minamo's subjects. I hope you're getting along with everyone there. Don't you worry about me. I'll be fine. Don't worry about that either. Having you alongside me means I never feel lonely. I pat her soft hair. She's pacified a little by this gentle little exchange, but she still looks a little put out at not having to be around me constantly now. I won't be going home alone by myself anyway. I've made plans with Ryuji. Come on. You're what? And yet you shouted it out. You just completely blurted it. She wanders back into the classroom, muttering to herself. <sighs> I just don't know sometimes, guys. But that's okay. After I return home after spending the afternoon with Ryuji, I start flicking once again through my grandmother's papers. I'm still looking for clues to Autry's lost memories whenever I get a chance. She remembers me, which means that she was living in this town eight years ago. The order that Autry is trying to remember must be something to do with the last project my grandmother was working on. I've been trying to work out the nature of this project from whatever fragments of information I can find. I'm slowly piecing together some kind of vague outline, and yet I can't for the life of me work out what Autry has to do with it. I relax for a moment and instantly my concentration is just gone. I look out of the window and see the sun dipping below the horizon. Ah, Tree's late. Apparently, the girls have made plans to go and grab some food after club activities. And you know what? That's good because that's showing that there's a sense of, you know, normal, normal life. You know, that, that it's not necessarily the end times if you're able to go and do that. I'm glad that Audrey is making friends like this, but I have to admit that there's a tinge of loneliness to the situation too. But I suppose being in the position to feel this particular loneliness just shows how lucky I am. I look lazily around the room until my gaze settles on an object on the wall, the calendar, and these issues. When the 45 day countdown has finished, 
Autry will be leaving. At least, that's what she says. But I won't allow it. I wonder how I'd feel if she really did disappear. The loneliness I feel in this moment, left by myself on this ship, would probably feel like absolutely nothing in comparison. Ugh, what is wrong with me? I feel like I'm crying all the time lately. During my time at the academy, I had always prided myself on not shedding a single tear in even the hardest moments. Maybe I'm just making up for lost time. It feels so nice to just let go and cry. It does actually, guys. I'll, I'll admit, I'll, I'll strip my, my manly, you know, persona away here, but shit has been fucking tough for me, you know? And I'm sure it's been tough for you guys too. Who knows? But if you have the opportunity, let it out. Because holy fucking shit, does it suck to just keep it in. I've started to look back on who I was, all the things I did, and think myself a fool. Exactly what senseless pride was I fighting so hard to keep intact? And how do I fight to protect peaceful days that I've found now? I hear a creak from the pier outside. Footsteps. In an instant, my heart leaps up from the bleak depths uh, to which it had sunk and pounds vitally in my chest. It's not Autry, is it? Catherine? Nope, it's Autry. Okay. As soon as Autry slams open the cabin door, she flings her shopping bag onto the bed and throws herself at me. Hey now, calm down. <laughs> she bounces up and down, her adorable little cowlick bobbing as she grins up at me. I can tell from that smile that you don't need me to answer that. So it's that obvious? Or not. I really appreciate the sentiment, but please allow me to refuse. I value my stomach. Peeking inside the shopping bag, I find little else except minced beef and onions. Damn. No, that's a that's a really good thing. That's a really, really good thing. Okay, I'll get cooking. When I try to walk to the kitchen, Autry stands before me and pushes me back with the strength of a sumo wrestler. As ominous as it sounds, it seems like tonight I have no choice but to eat Autry's creations. Maybe it won't be so bad this time around. In the kitchen, Autry assumes an expression of utmost seriousness. That was the wrong meat. That was the wrong meat. It's M-E-A-T. Oh my god. So, I know somebody in, in like, QA, or who has done QA for a visual novel. I should probably ask him, but the process of, like, going through and making sure everything is not only functional with the entire, you know, structure of the game, but everything reads okay with the script and everything's popping up as it should. Um, do, do they not do like a second pass? Do they not revise? Do they not have another person like sit, go through the visual novel and, you know, make sure that everything reads totally okay? Because the amount of issues that I'm coming across, guys, it's alarming. That's bad. That's really bad. This is the official translation. This is less like cooking and more like some kind of science experiment. Like, I was a little hard on a Matsutsumi, um, but even, even that was totally fine. At least you could read it just okay. But here it's like, there's so many missing words and, and spelling mistakes, grammar, and it's just, what the fuck? She gradually works her way through some kind of recipe in her mind, measuring weights and numbers with exact precision. Remember guys, you don't have to be perfect when it comes to cooking. Alright, dinner is ready. We'll see how it goes in the next episode. I will keep 
all of us in suspense. It really was a chapter called fucking sex education, really. Jeez. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. I've done my little rant on the uh, quality of the script in this one, but no, I, I am very curious as to how is it this bad, man? Because this is this is kind of shit. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you all I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I did personally, besides the uh, mistakes in the script. And if you enjoyed this episode like I did, make sure you leave, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe. Don't leave a like because of the script. Leave a like because of the you know the content. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.